Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Scratch the Track podcast presented by the Dude and Grim Show and co-produced by Mr. I-V-E-S-T. I'm the Dude. And I am Grim, and today we're going to talk about, I can't hold it up because they never pressed it on vinyl. It. But we are going to talk about LP by Ambulance Limited. Let's, yeah, a very... It's ironic that it's say, called LP and it, it has never been on an LP. LP, yeah. Um, I'm curious how many people out there, one, have heard of this band and um, know the story of this band. Because it's 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 an interesting story that uh, I I don't know if a lot of bands um, have a story like this. Yeah. It was, it's, it's, it's pretty, I first became well. aware of this album near the time it was released, I think, by none other than show producer Mr. Ivest, and forever grateful for that because it has always been one of my favorites. In fact, uh, in preparing for this episode and re-listening to the album, I just went ahead and did it twice in a row because I it's, it's, it. it's really good. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, the the band itself is currently residing in the uh, Where Are They Now file. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the members have gone on and done other things. But, I mean, essentially, they, you know, a couple of guys is Michael DiLibito and um, this Longstreth. I don't know his, his first name. Um, started uh, the band in Cleveland. And then Marcus Congleton joined a year later. Now, He's the one who sort of became the principal be, songwriter, right? I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's sort of my understanding. Yeah, um, and he's he is like the front man. Who, His voice, I, believe, I mean, he's the sings, voice. In all I think the all the songs. Yeah. yeah, and he's the one who, after the band disbanded, like he's the one who legally acquired the name and kept the name and everything. Yeah, um, but 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 it's just kind of funny because uh, I guess I always think of like when bands start. Usually, I mean. Uh, not that he wouldn't be a founding member, but he joined like a year later. And yeah, it's, like, it's just interesting. It's, well, it's like Gilmore with Floyd. I mean, yeah, that's true. A couple that's of years true. later, right? That's that's yeah. But um, essentially, <clears throat> so they were signed to uh, this uh, TV TVT gave them a record contract, um, pretty much from just seeing them live and whatnot. And then they pressed this album, which was uh, released in two thousand four, and then it came out like a year later in the UK. Uh, which I thought that's, you know, to, to put it out a year later, that's that's a while. But mm -hmm. even before the album came out, a couple of the members already left and went to other other bands like Matthew Dublin and Darren Beckett left to form the Red Romance, um, which I'm not overly familiar with. But I, I don't know if that's a good decision or not. But that's also an interesting thing just to like, hey, we just got done recording this album. We're going to go for form a, a, a new band. Um, well, the only thing I would ask is, it says here that this album, despite its, mm, I don't want to say lack of notoriety, but maybe sort of minimal amount of notoriety, still went on to sell more than 100,000 copies. Thousand. I wonder if Red Romance did the same. Ooh, that is a good question. Not that know. sales are the only <laughs> thing that matter. But I just highly doubt that the shit is this good. Sorry, I just do. I... They don't hurt. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, initially, we'll get we'll get to probably some more history of the band in in a minute. I mean, dude, this this album. I mean, I think you and I were talking about this, and maybe I asked the question. I was like, "Gosh, is this the best album a band has put out that's only put out one album?" You know, like like a one album wonder. I and I was trying I was trying to think of other bands like are there uh, and we would love it if you guys have other bands that have been like put out in just an amazing album that you've been like really into and excited about. And then you never hear from them again or they go on and do other projects and whatnot, because this is just exceptional work, man. It's really, it really good. Now, I can tell you that there are. There are some other ones, and I think one that comes to mind, I, I have to look to make sure, but um, I want to say, dude, the band Big Star. I could okay. be wrong on that. Or, dude, Operation Ivy's Energy. That's that's considered a one album. Okay. Wonder. That's, that's a fantastic one. But I, I okay. want to say that that Big Star, um, that is widely considered 
uh, one of those. But again, yeah. tell us below. Like, subscribe, and comment uh, below. Just, just to confirm. I, I, did Temple of the Dog only do one album? Yeah. You that know. was a one album wonder and a super group. And a super group. I mean, damn, checking multiple boxes there. Mm -hmm. um, but so essentially, it seems like, you know, I don't I, New radicals. I, there's not a lot of. The, oh, the new radicals. <laughs> you got the music in you. Um, it's interesting because it, there's not a lot of information out there about kind of the band and them breaking up or anything like that. And it's probably because they never got that big and a lot of people maybe didn't care. Um, it, but it would be curious to know, like, you know, what, what was the reason they all left the band? I, I mean, I imagine it would be sort of creative differences and things like that with Marcus Congleton, right? Like, I mean, that's, I'm you just would, assuming that that's you would think, the, but I the don't case. Know for sure. But it's like, man, everybody in the band left uh, to go do their their own projects and, and whatnot. And so, you know, this band came out and then I remember this this album, this album had been out. And I had been following them and like on their MySpace page. And then they had put out like some videos and it, I had heard that they were working with John Cale from the Velvet Underground on like the new material or at least um, what's it Marcus was. Yeah. And he was in L.A. like writing new material and everything. And they had like, you know, a couple little like there was I think I shared with you like a little clip or a little documentary um, that somebody put together. And it just had some of the them in the studio working on tracks yep. and interviews and stuff. And I was just like excited for that. And then it was one of those things you just kept waiting for and waiting for and waiting for. And essentially what happened is the record company, TVT, had to file for bankruptcy wow. because there was um, uh, the uh, another record company called Slip and Slide. So TVT had actually, dude, they had put out stuff by Nine Inch Nails. I think they did Pretty Hate Machine. Um, they did stuff with Snoop Dogg, Ja Rule, and also the Black Crows and Jimmy Page. So like it, it was it sounds like they were just like a mom and pop shop record label yeah like they they had some acts right mm -hmm. and but they had also had a uh, a rapper by the name of pitbull um and apparently tvt had tried to block the sale of um this slip and slides record of that and anyways it went to court and the judge ruled against tvt in favor of slip and slide for like nine million dollars and TVT was just like, yeah, we're done. So they had to file for bankruptcy. And since then, so, huh. so basically all the, you know, the tapes and everything were, were owned by TVT. And so all this stuff just kind of got frozen essentially. And now it has been bought and passed on the, the tapes, the contracts and all that stuff to, to multiple, Jeez. multiple people. And That's so wild, man. So it just hasn't been put out. And I don't know if it will. I don't know if Marcus has made any attempt to like, you know, to say, hey, let me buy these from you or has any interest or or like, dude, you could. No, I don't know if they own the actual songs. I don't know what the contract is, but it's like, man, can you just like re-record the songs? Like what? There's got to be something Swift. to do. I thought do a Taylor that Swift, right? he like, owned the songs. I thought I read that, that he owned the publishing rights. But if he doesn't own the masters then yeah. I don't know. So, uh, but it's a anyways, shame man. that like, dude, Marcus, if you want to start a band, like, dude, I, I got a bunch of shit. Like I'm ready to go. Dude, call him up. Yeah. Call him. Just send us an email. Dude. And after you like, subscribe, at it, comment, comment, below, comment below, below, you can kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. Well, he is, um, currently grim in a new band. I'm not sure if you would vibe with this, but the new band is called drug cabin. Um, I I'm did not see the title work. of the band, which I like. I feel like I should check it out, though. Yeah. Yeah. So drugs, a cabin. Um, so but here's the thing is we hadn't heard any of these. And Grim, using your um, high IQ, did a simple YouTube search. <laughs> yeah. And you uh, can actually there there are there are tracks out there. And what what? I forget how many there were. There was like 15 or so, yeah, I, I think. And 14. so there's a YouTube, the, there's a YouTube video that has all the tracks kind of split up into individual songs. Um, and some of the titles did pop out that I had heard or, or read that, you know, they were, 
tracks that he was working working on for for the album now here's the thing i only listened to a handful of them and we have no way of knowing like are these final right are they oh sure were they just rough mixes are they still still are these demos are they still putting stuff in so it's that we don't know but it's out there and if you want to listen to it and you can it's pretty sweet that he was working with john kale though like that's that that, that is pretty cool um, I was incorrect. Also, Big Star was not a one album wonder, but dude, a lot of really interested Blind Faith. Now there's a super group. Mm-hmm. Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, yeah. Stevie Winwood. They were just like Jack Bruce. Sorry. Yeah, I forget who was playing bass for him, but those were the main guys. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, okay. some interesting one album <coughs> wonders. Temple of the Dog was on that list. Mother Love Bone. Ooh. That, that some of those guys went on to form Pearl Jam. Damn. All right. Yeah, mate. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, that's pretty much the what I think I have. You know, on the background of the album. Yeah, um, I, I don't have a whole lot either. It's just interesting that I, I would like to know more about the recording process because it was said that part of it was done in London and New York, and I just yeah. think that would be interesting. And I wonder if that inspired the song that ended up on their EP, the new English EP, which is great, um, called Oh English. Or, no, dude. <laughs> Our Buckle Swan so you new English. Yeah. Our Buckle yeah. Swan song is maybe the yeah. best song they ever did. Our Buckle Swan song. So here's the deal. Yeah, if if you guys are well, if you guys like this band, I would definitely check out the new English it's called the New English EP. Oh, it's, and it's fantastic. Got, dude, some great songs, dude. It's got a cover of Pink Floyd's Fearless, yep, like a live good. version of it. Um, it's got demos of uh, a couple of tracks that are on this album. And then the last track is called Straight A's. So on this album, the U.S. version. I was going to go into this next. Yeah, it has the cover of um, Ocean by the Velvet Underground. The U.K. version, they replaced that with the track Straight A's. Oh, which is a, the Ocean. Dude, the Ocean actually would have been. Just a great way to end the album. It's kind of tough because it's always ended like that because that's the version yeah. I have because uh, from right. the CD. But like, yeah. ah, that's that's a really good song, and I actually didn't know that song. I'd like to know what Velvet Underground album it's on. Oh yeah, uh, no, it's I did. not I on. Found... It's definitely not on Loaded. It's not on the Velvet Underground and Nico, which is the uh, Banana Peel. So. So there is, I believe, unloaded disc two. There is a demo, I believe, of of um, Ocean, and then and then on there is some album. I, I don't know if it was like a, a B side or something okay. that was out there, but I did find um, like an actual like proper proper recording of it. Mm, um, nice. So the Velvet Underground. I think he, the way he sings really would lend itself uh, well to a Lou Reed song. Assuming that that's yeah. a Lou Reed song, I'm I'm going to. Assume yeah, that. I, I imagine. Yeah, because they imagine weren't it all, is. especially once you got to Loaded. Yeah. Well, they put it on the Super Deluxe Edition. <laughs> it's on the Super Deluxe Edition of the Velvet Underground. Um, so is that that's, so? That's their second album. I, yeah, I guess it is, right? Because I think uh, their what, first one was called The Velvet Underground and Nico, and then I think it was The uh, Velvet Underground, and then I think Loaded would have been third. If I, I could be wrong on that, uh, but... Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Anyways. But yeah, it is, it is on, it's on disc four of the Velvet Underground 45th Anniversary Super Deluxe Edition. So, wow. Um, and we'll talk about it. I, I you know... I listened to it, so when we get to the track at the end, you know, we can talk about it a little more. Well, but. I almost <laughs> want to talk about it now because I, I don't consider mm-hmm. that part of the proper album. That is a bonus oh, okay. track. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's like fair. to me. Then, that is that is not that I would scratch it anyways, but okay. it's it's not in bounds to scratch in my opinion because it's a bonus. Okay, track. that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so so listening to it, the, the songs are very similar, and his vocals and everything actually like. You know, the way Lou Reed sings it, uh, at least on the this recording that I've heard, um, I find that it's not like a reworking of the song. You know, sometimes covers mm-hmm. are sort of like, a you know, it's a completely different version. It's more of a tribute and it it, it has the same kind of tempo and kind of like fearless, like, that. like what they did. Yeah, with fearless. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they weren't really trying to 
reinvent the wheel recreate there. it yeah yeah so i felt that they were they were very similar it's not like they they took it in some crazy different direction or anything so uh, so if you're a velvet underground fan you'll probably probably dig it i would hope um so <clears throat> all right grim should we uh go ahead and get into the trip yeah yeah we should <coughs> for, for goodness sakes we should All right. Track number one. Yoga means union. Is that true? I have no idea if like yoga actually means union or is that is like a saying? Do people say that? I I have no idea. It seems to stand to reason. I mean, I could do just a quick little search here and look it up, but does yoga mean union? Or people could let us know below. Yoga. Yeah. What's the meaning? What is the meaning? Um yeah, I don't know if you But anyways, um I think it's it's a nice It's 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 really a nice way to start the album. I, I mean, I think it sets it sets the tone. Not to say that that things don't you know go in waves and go higher and lower, but I think it sets a nice tone for sort of a um I don't know, just like a baseline for what the what what the rest of the things like a starting point rather for the rest yeah. It gives of- you it it definitely gives you the 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 feel kind of of the album yeah. um now i'm curious though because it is an instrumental so mm-hmm. how do you feel about that in general like starting the album with an almost five minute instrumental it's one thing you know we like stp did press play or whatever on tiny music oh, and God, I, you know which is awesome fantastic but um, but i think it's a little long but to me it doesn't feel long when you listen to the record I think that things sure. change enough in the song. It get, you know, it goes into some other, it goes into some other alleys, avenues, poses, yeah. if you will, being that it's yoga. I don't see anything oh, about yeah. yoga meaning you. Know. Uh, there's definitely some downward dog in this. Oh, song. oh yeah, yeah, child's pose, some warrior pose, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. it it does it does do a, enough that I think it it keeps it moving to the point where I'm never bored. To, to listen That's to fair. it, I, I, yeah, it, I can't say I skip it. Yeah, it's not my scratch. It's not my. Yep, I don't think it's my scratch either. So, um, all right. Well, now let's go on to track number two, "Primitive," the way I treat you. Probably Dude. my favorite. Yeah, it's it's definitely up there. Dude, the, just riff, that, the riff, the riff is, is fantastic. It's it's badass. Now this is the we will talk about the other singles. This was the third single off the album. It might have been my. I might have put this first. Oh hell yeah! Um, not heavy lifting. Yeah, I like yeah, heavy I mean, lifting, I, but dude, no that that is. I don't know who the hell chose that as a lead off single, but. I yeah. think that was a that was a stupid choice. I wouldn't even release that as a single, quite honestly. Yeah, yeah, and we'll talk about that when we get to the track. But like, it this one just lends itself to a single. Really good transitions, good oh, musical yeah. arrangement, and the opening riff. You're just like, man, like, dude, back in the day when like, you know, people obviously radio. Instruments? Well, well, back in the day when people listened to music like on the the radio. Right? Oh yeah, like. Like, dude, I could just hear like somebody you know talking, to, yeah, talking over yeah. it right over the intro and everything, and then boom, you just get into it. Like, yeah, I can totally, it's... totally hear that. So, um, then we go to track number three. Dude, this uh, this has always been one of my favorite on the album man I, the acousticness of it is just sweet man it like, sounds like based on the lyrics it would sound like somebody flirting with heroin oh okay can you hear that interesting then you fall back could, asleep and wander down the well, street that the users street. that lose users lose user well it's kind of 
It's kind of funny you say that though, because I feel like it, you there's cut elements the circulation of the to your hand. To your hand. I mean, dude, there's dude. It's got some stranger action going on. Oh, you think about that? maybe it's think about, about doing this. It's about the stranger. Could be about the stranger. <laughs> oh, but see that episode. To, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, but it's funny you say that though, because it, it, there's parts of the song that actually remind me of like Elliot Smith. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And, uh, just the way the song kind of hops along and everything, almost like an Independence Day, Elliot Smith track, you know, Dude, like, which is you take awesome the first track. one and you take the first one for free and pass it along to it's me. I don't me. refuse. You see, you tried it several times. You're still not sure. Not sure. I don't know, man. It's if it's that's that's you a good di- point. You wow. dim the lights and administer the cure. The I cure. mean, it's it's very. I don't know. Listen, I've always thought that. You've always thought it was a drug reference, but there are specific things. You're disappointed things in, in the way she looks. Maybe you're disappointed in, you know, like Mother Superior, right? Like, yeah. in the way she looks. So, interesting. Wow. Let us know below what you guys think like, this track in the comment below is kind of relating to. Man, yeah. It's, oh, dude, it's an awesome track. Mm-hmm. Now, I like the piano. Ding, 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 oh, ding. Dude, yeah, the yeah, way it it's dances so, it, kind of, it's nice. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, it's badass. First um, single. We, track number four. First heavy single. Lifting. Yeah, I, again, I love this song. Mm-hmm. I think it's great, but I would not put it as the first single because it's really straightforward and all the guitars are just like dan 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 like there's yeah. not like mu- musically it's not awesome now it does kind of have that sort of ending section oh where it just the ending like section chills. is that great ping, dude you know yeah it, it, where it, the guitar playing on there is really it's just like a really nice little riff thing that, that it's it very pink floydy um, i think in the end yeah 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 definitely um and, and so i do like that but again i, I just I, I don't know that I just, to me. I don't know that I would have chose this as a single. I, I just no. I I don't know. But uh, there's but a couple there's other good, tracks. really good lyrics too. Yeah, yeah lifting there's a couple is an other awful lot of pain. I'm pain, going to be sore for sure. Soothe your bones with the papers of a man that you know. These kids are really going to grow <laughs> and leave their daddy home. I don't even know what that means. Either do I. Um, all right, then we go to track number five, Ophelia. <laughs> this is a really good one, and I was trying to find stuff about them and uh, it happened upon some sort of a blog message board thing, and there was more than one person that like really had it out. And I don't mean in a bad way. Like they were really like Ophelia is oh. one of the best songs ever. And there's actually a lot of songs named Ophelia. The band has a song named Ophelia. Like it, wow. you could do, it could be a songs of the same name episode. If people responded to that, which they didn't, but this one is really good. I, I don't know. Um, it just, it has a good, it has a good feel to it. I don't know what it yeah, is. Uh, it, it does. And one thing about some of their songs, too, is they have these little transitions and sounds that, that give their stuff just a a little bit of a darker tone yeah. sometimes. Uh-huh. You know, I'm here. Now, I, I got to ask you, and I should I have done this. I just don't trust you now. Baby. <laughs> yeah. uh, all over the streets of the town, I walk them. I'm walking around. I'm late. I'm late for hundreds of things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I was going to ask you and I should have before we got in the tracks. But if you were to choose a season that you would most closely associate this album with, what is it? Oh, man. I would probably have to say more of the summertime for me. More of the what? Summertime, I think. Oh, really? Oh, OK. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It feels very there's... fall to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I would say, I would say almost like you know when like I say this I'm forty one, but like as school is starting, you know, like kind of end of the summer going into fall. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I don't know okay. when. I, I don't know when I got into it. I'm not sure. I'm probably the same time you guys did. But um, was it March twenty third, two thousand and four? The day it was released. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. I was not. I was not that hip to things. Still not yeah. that hip to things. Yeah, for Thing. real. 
I just don't trust you now, babe. Um, all right. Then we go to track number six. Stay where you are. One of my favorites. One of my other favorites. Dude. So, I mean, so awesome. If if I had one criticism of the song is that it has this long two minute intro. Um, but that sort of kind of builds up. Now, they cut that out on the single in the music video. So that the intro oh, is, interesting. OK, just, it just starts playing. But it just starts playing. Yeah. yeah OK. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but man, like. And this was a single, I believe they, I'm trying to think. Yeah, second single, they, yeah. 2005, oh. February 28th. And dude, it just has has a nice flowy feel, man. It's it's just very, like, I love, it's just so smooth, man. And I just like, just I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> that, that line, it, the, the way trying, he, he delivers that line is, is really good. Yeah. Dude, I stay might where not you are. be the one that's true, but I'm trying. Stay where you are, I'm right behind you. Yeah. They're burning deal. hotels down. down. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's good, uh-huh. good shit in there. Uh, then we move to track number six, Sugar Pill. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, I've I've always liked this song. I think this could have been a single. Yeah, I think it would have been a good choice. It's actually not one of my favorites on the album. Um, and that's not to say that I'm going to scratch it. But uh-huh. it it just, to me, it gets a little too repetitive with the... Like it it kinda, does stick on that a bit. Yeah, and it, and it still goes even after like the rest the- comes in. Ba-doom, boom, boom, yeah, ba-doom, yeah. Ba-doom, the way ba-doom. it's, it's, oh. a, it's a really good song. And I just, the, again, the lyrics, it's very well written. Dude, I love you for the time that you killed my sugar. Yeah. I, I do think it's weird how he says my sugar pill. pill. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's like, you know, and going off that lyric, I love you for the time that you killed it. I mean, is it is it sort of like you think he's like referring to a, an actual person? Like oh, a relationship absolutely. That, that he yeah. had. Oh, um, yeah. Almost as if they were just like a a fling, you know, a fling. Yeah. A, a, a filler, a time filler. Yeah. Right. A hole in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Evil, that was for you, my friend. There you go. All right, Grim. Track number eight. Michigan. Travel to seaside Michigan. Walk on the water with a friend. Dude. Well, love I mean, this song. we're here in Michigan, so. I just, uh, uh, the only thing that's funny that I don't think you could get away with today is how he says that he's sucking wine like an Indian. <laughs> Probably not. I don't think yeah. that would really fly to, uh, and I'm only no. saying that quoting, so let's not get canceled over that. But um, no, uh, we're almost yeah, I just, subscribers. I, I really, I really love this song. I always have. I think it's, it's just got the nice, the, the nicest sort of chill I mean, it's, tone. And it, it sounds like what it, what it's supposed to be, just kind of like on this walking warm, on the beach, breezy, yeah, breezy day, just like. And I'm like, it's about the time beach. somebody wrote a song like that. Yeah. Now, you know? what I really want to know is, where is like, was he? Is, is he? Yeah, where was he? Are we talking about a specific like beach? Like, you know, are we talking Grand ha- Grand Haven? Are we ah, talking fuck that man, go up north. Sleeping Bear Dune, yeah, yeah north, go going up north. north. Yeah, that's the water yeah. so much. You want to talk about blue waves? They're real fucking blue up there. Yeah. All right. All right. Track number nine, Grim. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. Again, I love this, dude. I've loved this song too, man. Um, I just love the the way it strums with the acoustic in the opening, and then goes. Yeah, you know? yeah, oh, man. dude. Yeah. It's, it's, it's and just, I like when he just, gets into the stay tuned part. They got kind of that slide that's like, ear, ear, ear. yeah, very much reminds me of the way Harrison does the slide on um My Sweet Lord. Okay, all right, ear, that makes ear, sense. Ear, uh, yeah, yeah. I I like this song because, dude, I feel like the way he sings it, it it's kind of a little attitude, a little swagger to it. 
Yeah. Um, and, and his and, voice and is very. I mean, I don't want to say flat, but do you know what I mean? It's not overly sure. animated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. This is this is a, this is a pretty. But it's got this psychedelic, even poppy sound too. Mm-hmm. Like when it gets into this, stay pretty. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'll come back sometime and soon. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I've always, I don't know. Well, I would pick this. Stay tuned. Not. I would have picked <laughs> this as a single over heavy lifting. Turn off. <clears throat> turn off. Tune in and drop out. Stay tuned. No. <laughs> stay tuned. All right, Graham. Track number ten. Swim. Kind of a trippy song. Um, it's, it's almost very much like he was like, man, somebody already wrote the fucking ocean. Um, so, what can I do here? <laughs> but, well, it, you know, it, it, it reminds me of that. It's building off of Michigan, right? It's like, okay, he was he was on the beach dude, having a walk. The I water know, was blue. I and he's like, dude, scratch, I'm stay tuned. Swim. But if I did scratch, stay tuned. It would be pretty fucking sweet to go from Michigan right into swim. I mean, you got to admit. Michigan, swim, and then the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 sorry. Yeah, I fucking say double scratch. Young urban ocean. <laughs> I think it's just ocean. Is it just yeah. ocean? The ocean. The, oh, the, it's the ocean. Yeah. So isn't that what, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's a bonus Led track. Led Zeppelin's? Led Zeppelin's The Ocean, right? Oh, songs. Songs are the same name. We keep coming up with this, and it was a great idea. I guess everyone just did. The world was not ready yet, but it was a great idea. Maybe one of these days we'll bring it back. All right. Here I am again, my friend. All right. Uh, Dude, this. So, yeah, dude, this song's pretty trippy. It's got this. Like this weird bendy kind of guitar sound. They do that in several where they really. Yeah, 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 I like it. Uh, And you know, I've shaken hands with native lands. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Okay. Like, is he talking about Canada or just anywhere is a native land? I mean, provided native being not white. (laughs) You know, like it is not our native land. We just kind of came here and we're like. Hey, we're gonna take everything. You can go over there, but you can take our money. So Here's it's good. so piece. we're good, right? <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Um, all right, Grim. Let's uh, Young go with track Urban. Eleven. Young Urban. Um, so this, I guess, what we're saying is officially. And is finishes the album for us for our younger, purposes. yeah, yeah. Bonus tracks younger. don't count, okay. man. Okay, um, this is it. yeah. I mean, you know, at least to me, the song is um, uh, it's very like it's very often just kind of chill. Yeah, you know? it, it almost sounds like it would have made more sense on the new English EP. I don't know yeah. why I say that, but that that is it always caught me like that. Yeah, yeah, I do like like, that. dude. Bow, God, new English should have been on this fucking album. And Arbuckle Swan. Oh. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have the New English EP. It would be I, like... But dude, let's you know. face it. Like, I The other songs are good on there. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, well, I, dude, I would demos. definitely propose a trade. I'd propose a trade. Mm, ooh, that's a fun game to play. What, yeah. what tracks are we trading, man? What tracks are we trading? Proposing a trade. It's our new podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For anything yeah. that has like bonus tracks or an EP that immediately followed... You want to propose people a trade? Are, people are gonna people are gonna love the shit out of that. So wait, you guys scratch tracks off an album and you make trades? Yeah. And we're like, yeah, that's exactly what we do. Yeah, it's the same thing they do in sports. They make here's, trades and they get rid of people. Like, here's the deal: fucking, if you don't get it, you're not invited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're welcome. But while you're at it, go ahead and like subscribe. Like, subscribe <laughs> and comment below. Exactly. It can only help us in the algorithm. Um. Uh, yeah, no, you know, to me, I don't know. Not a lot stands out. It just kind of like build and build. It, it just is. Yeah, yeah, I think you are right. Like, I could definitely see it being on the new English EP. Um, can you imagine, but, dude? Just, just, just come with me on this journey for one minute. Imagine that swim ends and it's just silent. And then you just hear that that fucking whirlits are fading in. 
and it's Arbuckle Swan song is the last song in the album. Like, how, how goddamn awesome would that be? It would just be yeah. Sweet. So it says on Arbuckle Swan song, I know we're a little tangent here. Matthew Dublin wrote that, so he must be the one singing it. Well, he should have wrote more because it's a freaking awesome song. Yeah. So good. Do I look all that bad all the time? Huh? Dude, the last one at the party never has their shit together. That Dude. is one of the best never fucking has lines. Has their shit together. <laughs> yeah. In our buckle swan song, plays on the flight. All the way. I could hear from LA to, LA Hong, Kong. to Hong Kong. Now, what is LA to Hong Kong? I know yeah, Chicago probably. to Hong Kong's like 14 hours, I want to say. It's actually probably still pretty close to that because. Chicago is you're going up and over north. as opposed to so around. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah sure. The curvature of the earth definitely cuts that down. So it's probably not short. But anyways. All right. Time to scratch these tracks. Now, I guess we can talk about our favorite ones real quick. I would say, I mean, um, anecdote. I like a lot. Primitive. I, like, I, I mean, dude, there's a bunch. Stay where you are. Um, those are probably my favorite tracks, I guess. I yeah. Primitive. Ophelia. Michigan. Ophelia. All right, dude, can I just throw out a quick wager? There's a good possibility I'm going to be going back to Asia soon. Strong possibility. Now, if I do. Yeah, um, play our Uncle Swan song the whole time here on the flight. I could. Um, If what do we need to because I can't like I can't just bet you. Okay. Okay, I don't I, I have no idea. I don't know what we're betting. But I, I don't either. I'm just thinking of what record. I All would I know want. is you're going to Asia. <laughs> what record I would want. If I can pull uh, it off, what's it like an import? <laughs> you want to get an import? Yeah. I don't know. This one. Oh, God. Yeah. Find the just, Japanese just get the master and tapes and press it. <laughs> exactly. So. All right. Are we ready to scratch? Yep. Okay. I scratched I last I'm, time. You're on the team. Right, I guess I'm going first. All right. Well, you better go ahead and get your WTIFIS. You uh, motherfucker. Going. I dude. know what you're doing. And yeah, you dude, I'm scratching Michigan, shit. man. Travel to seaside Michigan. Walk on the water with a friend. Dude, I am scratching Michigan. Like, oh, dude, what a dick. You're from Michigan. You now I finally know. came well, back. I know. Michigan and you're gonna scratch Michigan. Oh man, I need a new sound dude, that says like what a fucking asshole. <laughs> you probably should. I mean, dude, it's it's just I've never like I think it's I love sugar pill and I love stay tuned. And Michigan just takes it takes it down too much for me. I mean maybe if it was later in the album, because I'm trying to think I don't know. Because you could have put Michigan after stay tuned and then gone right into swim. I you know, Again, I, I mean, you could have done that. Fantastic transition but, as well. But I've always, I think one of the biggest reasons is splitting up Sugar Pill to Stay Tuned for me. I just love those songs like so much. I understand. Like, uh, yeah, sure. I, I, I will skip Michigan to get to Stay Tuned. I just will. So Ooh. that's what I got. All right, Graham. That's what are you scratching, man? Well, we're not going OT. I'll sure as shit tell you that much. Uh, I yeah. would scratch Young Urban. Okay. Right. Like if, yeah. if the, the way Swim ends, if the ends. album ended with Swim, it would almost be like a nice bookend to the way Yoga Meets Uni. Meets you know what you. I mean? And and I just, like I said, I guess I kind of foreshadowed it by saying like that could just as easily go on the, the new English yeah. EP. So that's what I would scratch. And with my yeah. scratch, I would propose a trade as mentioned for Arbuckle Swan song. <laughs> So you'd actually end, you, you would like to swap out Young Urban wow. and end the I album can't with swap. Arbuckle. That's not the game. The game is what would you scratch? I would scratch Young Urban. Okay, so we play the game of if you had to, but we're going to play a quick game of if you could. So. If, you, dude, if you could. <laughs> if I'm rubbing the bottle and the genie comes out, I am definitely putting Arbuckle Swat song at the end. Here's the thing. And I'm going to listen to it all the way on the flight from, well, in my uh, case, it would probably LA. be more like Chicago, Chicago to Hong Kong. On your way to, yeah. Uh, way to the Detroit. thing is, though, the thing is, is I and I love Arbuckle's Swan Song, but it doesn't fit with anything on the rest of this album. I know. I know, I know it's it that doesn't. good, though. It's that good. It is. I mean, it, doesn't, it is that good. It also doesn't fit with anything on New English EP. It is very, like, 
in a song that just stands on its own, but it's it's excellent. So now I like that also very much a side note here, but I like that the cover of the new English EP that's actually a Wurlitzer electric yeah. piano oh, it is. with the yeah. top off. So you're okay. just seeing the guts of it, which in working on my Wurlitzer electric piano, I saw that picture a fucking lot. <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you did. So, um, all right. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up here. Yeah. Graham. We would love to know if uh, anybody out there. I mean, I imagine if you're watching this, you're probably a fan of Ambulance Limited. But if you're new and this is new music for you. Let us know what you guys think. Hopefully we've introduced you into something you haven't heard before. I know a lot of times we'll we'll pick more mainstream stuff yeah, or stuff that easier, people will know. Easier things. But but this is definitely probably one of our maybe lesser known kind of kind of albums. Favorites. There's also oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely one of our favorites. So if you guys know of some other uh, lesser known stuff you guys would like us to check out, we would definitely uh, we always look forward to recommendations. So on that note, Grim, it's time to, it go. Time to go on the Dude and Grim Scratch and Track is produced by the Dude and Grim. Additional music provided by Moore and the Tins. Copyright 2023. The Dude and Grim Show. 